Okay, so now I'm on to the variable oxidation states of the transition metals. And I'm going to start off with the oxidation states of chromium. So chromium has two plus six oxidation states. One of these is in dichromate, and the other is in chromate. The colour of dichromate is orange, and the colour of chromate is yellow. It then has a plus three charge, which is in the chromium three plus ion. And the colour of this is green, whereas in the plus two charge in chromium two plus, the colour is blue. Just to note about this chromium 2 plus is it's a very unstable iron and will readily oxidize in air to produce the chromium 3 plus iron again. And we'll come on to that more later. So the dichromate and the chromates can both be at equilibrium, and the equation for this is the dichromate plus water at equilibrium with two chromates plus two hydrogens ions. This is not a redox reaction, and that's because the oxidation states are all unchanged, so we can see that the chromium goes from a 6 to a 6, and the hydrogen goes from a plus 1 to a plus 1. So it can't be redox because there's no shifting, no transferring of electrons. We also need to be able to apply Le Chatelier's principle, so I've just wrote about adding hydrogens, this will shift the equilibrium to the left to oppose the increase in the concentration of hydrogens. This decreases the pH, which, don't get confused, that means it becomes more acidic, because pH 0 is the most acidic. If you added OH, it would become more alkaline, or less acidic, however you want to look at it, and that's because the pH will increase. So, following on now. Dichromate is reduced by zinc in an acidic solution, and this is normally hydrochloric acid. To derive the equation for this, I find this one is easier to just derive the two half equations, because dichromate to chromium 3+, plus, which is what is reduced to, is a fairly easy half equation to do, and zinc to zinc 2+, plus, well, zinc 2+, plus is the only ion the zinc forms, so again, that's another easy half equation. But then, the chromium 3 plus can be further reduced, and this is using an excess of zinc, again in acidified solution. However, this time, we have to do it under an inert atmosphere, and this is what I was talking about before with the 2 plus chromium 2 plus ion, is it's very unstable, so it will oxidize in air back to the chromium 3 plus ion. Therefore, to prevent this, we have to do it in an inert atmosphere. The equation for this is quite easy to remember. It's two chromium 3 pluses, add zinc, forms two chromium 2 pluses, add zinc 2 plus. Right, so moving on to oxidation now. Chromium 3 plus can be oxidised by H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. And this is done in alkaline solutions. And normally, it's sodium hydroxide. Just a special note, when you're reducing, you use acidic solutions. When you're oxidizing, you use alkaline solutions for the transition metals. Anyway, the product of this oxidation is chromate, not dichromate. Why, I don't even know. It just is. And the equation for this, I find it, you might as well just remember it. So it's 2 chromium 3 plus, add 10 hydroxides, add 3 hydrogen peroxides, all come together to form 2 chromates, add 8 waters. When you say it like that, it doesn't sound that hard to remember. The next oxidation we need to know about is the cobalt 2 plus ions. However, there's two methods for this. The first one is again by hydrogen peroxide in alkaline solution. And the equation for this is 2 cobalt 2 plus, add hydrogen peroxide to form 2 cobalt 3 plus, add 2 hydroxides. The second way is by using air in an ammoniacal solution, so NH3. And you need to know the colours for this one. So we have a pink solution of cobalt with 6 H2O ligands surrounding it. And that's obviously got the 2 plus charge. When we add ammonia to that, 
This is known as an acidity reaction, which you don't really need to know about until the inorganic chemistry anyway. But that forms basically the precipitate of cobalt, because it's got a neutral charge, which makes it a solid, and that's a blue precipitate. Then we add, when we add excess NH3, this reaction is known as a ligand substitution reaction, and that forms cobalt with the six ammonia ligands surrounding it. And that's a pale brown solution, but note the charge is 2 plus because ammonias are all neutral ligands. But when this solution is left in air, we will eventually get the cobalt 3 plus still surrounded by the six ammonias, and this is a dark brown solution. You need to know the types of ligands, you need to know the colours, and you need to know the types of reactions. So it's kind of a memory game, but that's how the examiners like to be. So that is it for the variable oxidation states of the transition metals.